Smith with one, fires a three at the buzzer. It's no good. April 6, 2011, a day to remember. It's the date the Thunder have earned their first Northwest Division title. And what a great way to earn the Northwest Division championship. Great for our fans. It's uh, great for our city to be division champs. A very exciting time for the Thunder. Hello and welcome inside our Oklahoman studio for another edition of Thunder Insider presented by Integris Health. I'm Kelly Kroll, your host, and with me in studio today, the radio voice of the Thunder, Matt Pinto, and TV analyst, Grant Long. Guys, as we anticipated, things getting a lot tougher down the stretch, certainly more physical, but this team has now doubled up, basically, and seen a number of the Western Conference opponents twice in just the last week. What's kind of stood out to you as they've gone up against a number of these teams more than once? Well, the way they've been constructed, the length of this team defensively is always an issue for the opposition. Now the strength along with the length kind of re-identify what this team is about defensively and really toughen how they deal with things in the painted area. I think that gives them longevity looking to the postseason. Well, I'm going with the two distinct differences between the starting unit and the second unit. I like what they bring, two different styles, but at the same time, talking about getting ready for the playoffs, you have to have a unit that comes on the floor that is totally different from your first unit, and I think they have that. And even George Carl, before the Nuggets game, said the bench was one of the things that scared him the most. And heading into a week where the Thunder hadn't seen the streaking Nuggets, a possible playoff opponent since the departure of Carmelo Anthony and Chauncey Billups, the Thunder walked away with their first win in the last seven tries at the Pepsi Center and became more equipped for the road ahead. They really get up and down. They score a lot more points than we do in the, in the fast break you know, category of the game. So it's important for us to actually slow the team down and not rush our game you know, to get into the game. They How about a block with great help after Gallinari got inside? When we got a chance to put teams away that we really need to put them away because in this game, in this league, you know, 20-point leagues is really nothing. Wow, stout defense. We can't have any stretches where we relax. It's kind of similar to the rest of the season where we times we struggle is when we've um, had four or five bad minutes, and uh, we had that in the Denver game. It's pretty simple. Usually when we move the ball and uh, we're locked in and play hard defensively, we're, we're in pretty good shape. And I think as Nick Collison said, Grant, it's something you've brought up a couple of times, the ball movement, always a key for this team, but especially when they're playing a defensive team like the Denver Nuggets. It's critical because when the ball moves, you all of a sudden you have a seam in the defense. If the defense has to shift, it opens up those avenues to the basket. Consequently, if you don't move, then the defense has a chance to concentrate on the ball. They're fixated on it and they can get to their places, maybe draw charges and close off those driving lanes. Pretty simple game, really, when you force the defense to have to go side to side. As you mentioned, there are crevices in what they do. There are exposed areas, and the Thunder have an array of opportunity on the offensive end of the floor. Nick Collison has done an outstanding job recently of finding open teammates playing at that power forward spot. You saw a kick out there for a three-point shot. It makes this team a lot tougher to deal with when the ball and the players are moving and in rhythm that way. Well, it's a very interesting thing. It looks like the Denver Nuggets are the likely first-round playoff opponent for the Thunder, but really, as we head into this last week, there's some tight races in the Western Conference. Where do you see all of this kind of ending up as, as the dust settles, if you will? Well, all of a sudden, the bottom's falling out on the Mavericks at the number three spot. Right now, they'd match up with the sixth seed, the Hornets, and Grant, the Thunder could catch them, and they'd have the tiebreak, having won the division, to get that number three spot, but as it stands, the odds uh, certainly leaning in the direction of the Thunder facing the Nuggets in round one. They're in the bracket where the Spurs would take on the Memphis Grizzlies. Grizzlies and then the Lakers and the Portland Trailblazers right now, a pair of longtime old Pacific Division rivals could clash in round one. Yeah, and I think the teams that are ahead right now, they have enough of a cushion that they're going to stand pat. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of movement. Like you talked about, it could be a possibility of a tie between the Oklahoma City Thunder and Dallas Mavericks, but that's very unlikely. I think the teams are going to win some more games. It's just going to play itself out, and we are pretty much stuck with where we are. And you guys kind of talked about the top of the bracket, but what about in the eighth position? The Memphis Grizzlies, seven of their last nine, they've won. Certainly a team that's dangerous sitting down there at the bottom, but what kind of headaches might they present? Well, they far and away lead the league in points in the paint, right? So that's the Zach Randolph, Marc Gasol combo, but also their ability with Mike Conley off that high screen and roll to penetrate the lane. 
you look at their talent and their depth and they're dangerous, but they've got youth and really have not, as a team, experienced playoff competition. I have no idea what to expect from them. And here's the thing, they're missing Rudy Gay, a big part of their offense, a huge part of their offense, but I'm looking at this ball club and saying they are very tough. And you mentioned Zach Randolph, you mentioned the inside play of Mark Gasol, but you talk about Tony Allen, who brings a very physical and tough defensive presence, and also Shane Battier. These guys can really get it done on the perimeter, so I don't know where their offense is going to come from, but they are going to be very tough defensively. I'll say this about them, whoever draws them in round one of the playoffs is going to get physically beaten up. They I may agree. survive the yes. series, mm -hmm. but they may get physically beaten up by what Memphis does on a nightly basis. That's a really good point. And, you know, we've spent a little time looking forward, but how about if we take a glance back at what a phenomenal month of March, the Thunder, finishing with a 14-2 record, including a six-game streak, a 5-1 and homestand. Just your impressions of that month, very, I mean, very impressive. Something the Thunder has never done as a as a organization. I think the more impressive part of it, Grant, is the fact that they added elements right before the month started, and yet those guys and Kendrick and Nazi Muhammad uh, and Nate Robinson get integrated in a way where this team didn't miss a beat. In fact, built on the previous success. And I've said all along, the team that, after a trade, the team that comes out of that pitch stop the fastest will have, a, have the best advantage. And I think the Thunder ramped up right after the trade and got some good play out of Nazi Muhammad in the starting spot before Kendrick came back. And that really helps uh, that really solidify that post position as far as defense is concerned. And I think Tua Man and the coaching staff as well, Kelly, will say they were 14-2 and two in March because they got a lot better defensively from the inside out. A transition that they made look pretty seamless, but certainly it can go both ways. Lots more coming up. Stay with us on Thunder Insider. Ahead on Thunder Insider. The pass with a nice dish to Maynard for three. Maynard will attack. Will float and score. Welcome back to Thunder Insider. Well, we're constantly talking about, it seems like, Eric Maynor and his ability to change the tempo in a game. But what about his scoring ability? As of late, I mean, against the Denver Nuggets, Coach Brooks used the word flawless. I mean, he came in and did a lot of things and different things that we haven't seen from him all the time. He was flat spectacular in a nine-minute stretch in that game, Grant. From the late third into the midway points of the fourth quarter, he fueled a 16-0 run that turned that game totally in the Thunder's favor. And he did it under control as he normally does, just probing the defense, finding teammates, and then when avenues open for him to score, he did exactly that. What I'm impressed about more so with Eric Maynard is the fact that when he makes impactful uh, plays in the game, it's never about scoring with him. He's going to assist. He's going to get some continuity in the offense. He can get in there and probe and keep his dribble alive and wait till the defense collapses and opens up an avenue to pass to someone else. And I like that about that calming influence that he brings to the ball game. It may be helter-skelter. It may be up and down. But when he comes in, he slows it down and controls the pace of the game. The really unusual thing he has in his second season is what Mark Price took a long time to master, and that is that floater in the lane. You break down mm -hmm. the initial line of defense. You float that home before the back line can really attack you. And it's really an incredible uh, knack that he has to yep. loft that shot home, and it really freezes the defense. It's an enormous tool that he uses. Well, we talked about the Western Conference standings and everything and the playoffs in that situation, but now let's look at the East for a second. And if you look at the parity in the records of the Eastern Conference teams, do you see any of the teams near the bottom being able to make some noise? What interests you about that? The team that I've got my eye on, Grant, is the seven seed right now, the Philadelphia 76ers. They could still wind up six. They're nip and tuck with the Knicks right now. But if I'm the Celtics at two, I don't want to deal with the athleticism and the depth of this team. Especially if you're the Celtics, you know, where they are as far as being up in age, you don't want to deal with a youthful team like the 76ers. But I'm more concerned with the 76ers and their ability to guard on the perimeter. I, I just don't think they're going, I'm sorry, guard on the inside. I just don't think they have the physical strength to guard anybody on the, on the inside, and that's where they're going to get beat. On, on night in and night out. And, and the other one to me, Kelly, before we move on, is the Heat and the Knicks. You talk about a round one series getting maximum play nationally with the star power in that series. It'd be fun from that perspective. I just don't think the Knicks have anywhere near what it's going to take to knock Miami off. No question. Well, I was just going to ask about the Chicago Bulls and your guys' impressions on them. I mean, to me, they have just really been impressive. And to be sitting where they are at this point, and Derrick Rose just every time I watch him is incredible. Well, you've got a candidate, obviously, for MVP in the league, and you've got a candidate also for the coach of the year. So two things working in their favor. This club is playing some tremendous basketball, and Tom Thibodeau 
living proof that a defensive-minded coach can succeed in the NBA. And with uh, Joe Kim Noah coming back from injury, Carlos Boozer integrating deeper and deeper as this season goes on. I love the wall dang as a complimentary piece in the starting five, and then the bench is outstanding as well with versatility. That's a team you can't discount, but they lack the playoff experience and the toughness from previous years that you wonder, will that catch up with them as the playoffs uh, grow on? Even with the home court advantage, will that catch up with them down the road? So is Thibodeau the coach of the year in your opinion? No question. In my mind, he should be unanimous. I mean, to be atop the Eastern Division right now with the team that's had the injury issues they've had, trying to bring Carlos Boozer into the mix, they're the best defensive team in the Eastern Conference, he without question is. You've done a great job. Well, certainly lots still to play out play out in both sides of the bracket. It'll be interesting. Thanks for your guys' input. Like it a lot. We'll see you back here on Thunder Insider. Ahead on Thunder Insider. Who's your team? You got any, any team? Well, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Duke. You know, I really enjoy uh, meeting him. Steven, his name was. So uh, maybe he'll be watching this. So, you know, I just want to say hi to him. And uh, I mean, really, I had fun today. Welcome back to Thunder Insider. The latest edition of Thunder Magazine is now available and features some of the many faces in the Thunder crowd. It includes a story of a first NBA experience. Coach Barry Switzer attended a game last season during the playoffs and has turned Thunder games into a family experience. The magazine is available at the Thunder Shop and next week at Homeland Stores. Although the Thunder is in the heat of preparing for postseason, head coach Scott Brooks recognizes the importance of keeping his team grounded. In the midst of the grind, the entire team and coaching staff made a visit to OU's Children's Hospital. What's your name? Chase. What's up, Chase? How you doing? Yeah. Russell, nice to meet you. Let's go. We're gonna play some games somewhere. Just to uh, to bring smiles, you know, to uh, to to those kids. Come here. Uh, at the hospitals, you know, they are not as fortunate as we are. So uh, what's going on, my man? How you doing? What's your name? Billy, okay, I'm Tabo. It's great, you know, to, to, to give a little, little time, uh, you know, during our days just to do that. You the red? Yeah. Well, I think it's always good when, especially with the kids, when you can come out here and brighten up their day a little bit. And, you know, I know some kids be down, have to be out here. Some kids here for weeks, months, and years at a time. So, you know, I think it's always good that we could take a day out and come down here and try to, you know, brighten somebody else's day. It's a big fan, huh? Do you watch the NCAA tournament also? Who's your team? You got any any team? Well, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Duke. You know, I really enjoy uh, meeting him. Steven, his name was. So uh, maybe he'll be watching this. So, you know, I just want to say hi to him. And uh, I mean, really, I had fun today. Playing tic-tac-toe, foosball, video games, definitely putting a put a smile on their face and making their day. Oh yes, kids had a great time. Chase is off there playing with, doing crafts, and I think the Thunder guys are maybe having more fun than the kids this time. <laughs> we played the uh, Xbox, the NBA Live. You know, seeing big smiles on their faces, and uh, you know, just kind of getting, you know, just, it's a team activity for us, so that's even better. You know, little kids, is, you know, foundation where we build up from. And uh, it feels good to come back and just, just, you know, spend some time with them. So I had a lot of fun today. They got to actually kind of play with the kids and kind of keep their minds off of the sick or them being sick. So I think it's going to help out quite a bit. All right. It was nice to meet you. Oh, okay. All right. You stay strong. The commitment to the community is so important to the Thunder. And in another recent outing, Eric Maynard and Nate Robinson hopped on the Thunder book bus as it made a stop at Epperly Heights Elementary School. The Thunder teammates took nearly 60 students on a tour of the bus. The smartest person in the class, raise your hand. <laughs> nope, all of, you, uh, no, all of you can't be. We are just so lucky we were able to pick this great school. They're out here uh, visiting with Nate Robinson and Eric Maynard. So we are just delighted to have both of them out here today. They're having an absolute ball on the bus. <laughs> and if there were ever two more fun guys, I, I don't know if, if we would find them or not. Just the beaver love them. <laughs> we had 60 boys and girls, some of the top-notch boys and girls, come and have an opportunity to receive a book from an NBA basketball player and the Thunder Girls. What a great opportunity. So it was just fantastic. I'm, I'm thankful. My first book, uh, book bus was awesome. Uh, the kids are wonderful, fantastic. Uh, uh, for them, 
I know, you know, for me when I was a kid growing up, they had so you know stuff like this, you know, giving away free books, uh, you know, just food for the brain. They can share the book with you know family members at home, amongst each other in the class, and I think that uh, you know that just helps them you know stay closer in school and and want to do you know eat, you know even better you know night in and night out. It's an opportunity that rarely comes around, so I'm very thankful for the Thunder organization. And the guys were great. I mean, the guys were funny. They were cordial. Thank you. They were really appreciative of, of, of what we're doing here at Epley Heights. Ahead on Thunder Insider. What's the key to being a good coach in the kitchen like being a good coach on the court? Keeping everybody in, in line. You got to build them up a little bit, then you got to trim them down. Welcome back, Thunder fans. Remember, there are always tickets available to see your Thunder in action. Just stop by the Thunder Reward Zone each and every home game where a drawing is held for 25 pairs of complimentary tickets and 75 more pairs are available for just $10 a piece. The drawing is held one hour before tip-off, so if you're still looking for a seat, be sure to swing by the Thunder Reward Zone. In celebration of the NBA's Green Week initiative, the Thunder organization officially adopted Woodson Park in southwest Oklahoma City. The project was kicked off with a tree planting ceremony and a day of cleanup where the Thunder employees planted 14 trees at the site, one for every Thunder player. Well, this is part of our Green Week initiative. It's in conjunction with the NBA. And the great thing is the NBA likes teams to develop in their own communities what is uh, appropriate and best for that community. And in Oklahoma City, we're doing a number of things uh, here today. The volunteers are going around. They have litter sticks, bags, gloves, everything they need for a safe and thorough clean, clean and litter pickup. The main thing is making the place look nice, uh, picking up trash. Uh, and then we decided that we'd take it one step further. They are also planting the 14 trees. Representing the 14 players on the Thunder roster. I think that makes a big difference in the park. And the best thing is this isn't just Green Week. We're going to take this adoption of Woodson Park, take it throughout the year, and take it on upon ourselves to make sure the park looks clean. I think it's just a great example that the Thunder is setting for the rest of the community. And that we really want to make a difference in the community. And one way you can make a very visible difference is to do what we're doing, which is adopt this park and keep it, uh, keep it looking nice all year. And then really, uh, from an environmental standpoint, make sure that the trash is picked up and it just has a nice appearance all year. So I think it's a great thing. I love to see them come out and be a part of the community like this. I think it's a great thing they do. The Thunder organization also prides itself on creating a unique game experience this week and stealing the mic. Steely stepped into the kitchen to assist celebrity chef Rick Moonen, who prepared a treat for some of the Thunder's premium season ticket members. I got to ask you though, the big top chef question is, is Padma as hot in person as we think she probably would be? Absolutely. That's very important, yes. Hopefully I can assist you. At, would I be the sous chef? Yeah, that's... Does that un, mean you're going to sue, me, at, sue me after I mess no, everything man, up or what? You're the right hand man. Okay, number one, you're going to tell me what you feel most confident that you can do. Do you know the recipe I can boil a hot dog. I can boil the hot dog. Look at them wieners. Dog in the fire. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, sexy. All right, so and then what's in there? Shrimp and what else? Shrimp, tilapia. You see the chunks of shrimp in there? And those are herbs, that's cilantro and, and scallions. There's uh, ginger, garlic, and shallots. I always preferred Marianne, but that's just me. You, I thought you were kind of a professor type individual. Anyway, back to the dogs. How you guys doing? All right, we'll give them a little roll. Ah, Got to make that happy noise. Nice. How about ice cubes? You're gonna make an ice cubes? I, I can do that. Perfect yeah. every time. What's the key to being a good coach in the kitchen like being a good coach on the court? Keeping everybody in, in line. You gotta build them up a little bit, then you gotta trim them down. You gotta say, look, look, it's not that difficult. It's just it's basic. Mm -hmm. You're grilling a dog. Do it right, stay consistent, stay focused. Every grill marks the same. Make sure they're hot, don't overcook them, don't undercook them. It's not that hard. You've done it a hundred times. This is gonna turn out to be a great holding place. That's ironic because a coach does grill a lot of buns. Whoa, right when he gets hey, that was a good one. I like that. that. Yeah, bun <laughs> grill. Ah, what is. a team, huh? <laughs> let's, let's create some fake tension. <laughs> Boom. You stick this, what now looks to be an oversized dog, right? And there, like yeah. that. And you go down the side like that. Nice and moist. Every bite, a little bit in every bite. Got it? Okay. Chips away. The cover. Mint. And dog on it. That's a dog. <laughs> So we need to do that another 499 times 499 today. 499 mm -hmm. times. How's mine look? 
Uh, disgusting, but it, it, it leaves How's good. the presentation? No, it's, 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 it's perfect, honey. Look, when, who knows? If you mix them up, they look the same. Okay. Is it time for me to pack my knives and go? You know what, man? I need you to stick around, man. You did all right. <laughs> I told me you didn't know what you were doing, but what? I don't believe a damn word of it now. Well, 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 usually I don't know what I'm doing, but when I'm working with a master like this, even a buffoon can come <laughs> off and prepare a, a great dish like this. This is really good. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you very much for hanging with me. Steely taking credit, but I don't know that I really ever saw him do anything no. in the kitchen. Just kind of hang out. Although, I could have used some of those tips in the kitchen. If you ever need Pop-Tarts, I'm, I'm your guy. <laughs> well, let me know when Steely's cooking, and I'll, that'll be the day that I start my fasting. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. I make a mean bowl of cereal. <laughs> Pretty good nice. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> About the same level. Well, guys, real quick, just tell me, um, as Denver, we could see them, the Thunder, in the playoffs. Talk a little bit about the, the cat and mouse game that George Carl and Scott Brooks are playing right now. Do they show each other everything, just bits and pieces, just winning the games I think they show each other nothing, honestly. I think it's about mm -hmm. go out, execute what we do, base uh, at both ends of the floor. Don't let the other team get out and run, and that'll be the bottom line. Yeah, and I think George Carl although he doesn't really have an upper hand, he knows the personality of Scott Brooks, having him had him as an assistant coach for a long time. So that's maybe the only advantage that, that George Carl will have at this point, but no coach is going to show what they're going to do in these games. Absolutely, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks again for joining us here in our Oklahoma studio for another edition of Thunder Insider. More playoff breakdown next week and even more Thunder basketball.